thank you for thank the you. TED team for organizing this. I've been having nightmares about standing in this one spot for weeks now, and <laughs> I'm here today. <laughs> so today I would like to share some of my experiences abroad and how that impacted me and how I'm going into my career and how it's going to be changing in a little bit, and hopefully it will be a little enlightening to you guys as well. So in recent years, I've noticed that We've got students all across the world. We've got students from Great Britain, France, Australia, and all these students want to go to a developing nation, and they want to provide some care. Great idea, right? I mean, there's a number of benefits here. You get to broaden your mind. You get to learn about a number of different perspectives. You get to learn a different language. You get to immerse yourself into a different culture. And you also get to help out a community with the best of your abilities. And you get to take your knowledge that you learned in school, and you get to apply this knowledge abroad, and great opportunities, right? So I myself have gone on two of these trips before, and when I came back to the United States, I kind of started thinking, what have I done in the past two to four weeks that was truly beneficial? Was I there as a tourist trip, or did I actually provide some service that was long-term? And I started connecting with people around the U that were working on this stuff, and I realized I haven't really done much. And I kind of thought about this. Are we delivering some help that is reasonable, necessary, and appropriate? Or was I in that community potentially harming that community? And as I talked to one of my mentors, Trisha Taj, she kind of gave me the story of a physician who organized medical trips abroad with the medical students as well as physicians abroad. And they take this team, and they go into a community, and they help out this community. They provide some medical care. Great idea. I mean, you get to use your clinical knowledge, you get to apply this clinical knowledge, and you get to, you know, you get to get a broad perspective, and you come back to the United States, and you go on with your lives. You get to implement that knowledge that you just gained in this other country. But that's our perspective. What's the perspective of the people down there? What do they think of people coming into their country and providing medical care that they might need or might not need? And I thought about it, and I stepped myself back, and I thought about you know, living in India and how I would have felt about other people coming into my country back there, and what if they had been delivering care? How would I have helped? How would I have felt? How do these people feel when we go down there now and we're providing medical care? And I thought about it. You know, the physician, the local physician down there said, you know, you have all these American people, all these Australians, all these, you know, French people coming in and providing care. When I've been here and I tried to create this trust, this bond between my local members and myself so that they can come in and go for a, you know, medical checkup every once in a while so they can get vaccinations. But when you come down here, and Americans are always viewed as these wealthy people that have great health care, that have great education, and when you go down there, they're going to say, the local people are going to say, oh, what? why would I go to my local physician when I can go to the American physician, who is much better at his job than my local physician, which might not be true, by the way. And it kind of made me wonder, what's happening when we leave from these short-term trips? After these two weeks, four-week period, we come back, what's happening to this community? And the reality was really startling. It kind of thought, I kind of thought, oops, not going to go there yet. Uh, I kind of thought, Wait a second. If these people are going to look for these American people to come in and provide care, they're not going to their local physician, and they're going to expect Americans to come in and provide care again. Is there a solution for this? Were we really harming a community? And this is not just true for medicine, folks. This is true for reconstruction. When Haiti's earthquake happened, it was a terrible, terrible, terrible thing. Mother Nature was not very pleasant to them. And you have people from all across the world. They're coming in, they're providing care, they're providing money, they're providing these reconstructive ideas. They thought, you know what, this is, a, this is an opportunity for Haiti to rebuild itself. We can get a new country out of this. There's this positive aspects to it. And if you look at the reality here, I've noticed that 98.6% of the Haiti reconstruction work went to foreign countries and foreign contractors. Wait. If foreign countries are doing the work and only 1.6% of these contracts went to Haitian engineers, there is a problem. 
It's like saying, mom, can you do my math homework? And your mom does your math homework, and you don't get to learn anything. You, you don't get to think about these concepts. This is a problem. So if we do all the work, how can, it, how can we expect a community to sustain itself? How can we expect a country to become developed? And is there a long-term solution to this problem? And the answer is right in front of us. Believe it or not, it's staring right at us. We go to a school because we get to learn new skills, because we get to take, learn these new skills and you get to apply these new skills abroad, or you get to apply these new skills in your community. And if you go down there, and if you, there's usually already a system established, a medical system established, or some sort of an engineering system established, and you go down there and you work with the medical system already in place, you work with the local physician that's already there and providing care to the community, you get to transfer your skill set, your knowledge to this physician, and you get to learn from this physician so that when you come back to our country, you get to implement the knowledge that you gained. And when you leave that country, the local physician has a new skill set, new knowledge that he can use with his local patients. You develop a symbiotic relationship where you get to learn from the people down there, and you transfer your knowledge. And you get to, you get to teach the new knowledge. And you get to keep it, and also to remember that you'll be keeping an open-minded humility. When you go down there, you're going to think, wait, these people really don't have anything going on, so we've got to help out. And that's not necessarily true. You have to keep, it, keep that open mind. What we consider standard might not be the standard down there. They might have a standard down there, but it might not be the same. So if you have to have this ability to work with these people down there in their standards and transfer your knowledge. That way, you can have a community that can sustain by itself. You can have a community that can you know, survive after we leave that country. And you will not only have a short-term fix, but you will doubt the long-term relationship between countries. Thank you. Uh, so uh, you're talking about these uh, short-term fixes. Mm -hmm. what, ab what about Doctors Without Borders? Is that uh, sort of like the short-term fix as well? Right. Or? right. That's a completely different concept. Okay. Doctors Without we'll Borders that is essential. Okay. Because um, this is a need that you need in this community, whereas what we're doing here in these short-term trips is you're going down there that ha already has a system established, whether it be a medical system or an engineering system, and you're, pro and you're doing their work, essentially. That needs to be stopped. Where you really need some help, Doctors Without Borders is already providing that. Okay. And that's a great, great organization, and they're doing some tremendous things. So. Excellent. Thank you very much. You're welcome.